Hi, welcome to Whiteboard Friday. I'm Jess. Today we're going to talk about inequality in New Zealand and whether it's growing. So last week, and thank you to all those who watched, especially the lovely man who called me a nice lady, we talked about equality, inequality and opportunity and why we're interested in whether everyone has equal opportunities in New Zealand. And what I covered was the things that confer opportunities in New Zealand, specifically the resources which people have available to them. And we covered wealth and debt and family and community resources, income, health, lifestyle. And more or less of these confer more or less opportunities for people. But one of the big things that I focused on was the fact that in New Zealand, we tend to only measure income, especially in terms of inequality, and that's a little bit narrow. But given it's all the book we've got, let's talk about what we know about income inequality in New Zealand. And more specifically, is it growing? Now, why do we want to know if it's growing? We can argue over the absolute level of inequality and what's good and what's bad, though we know clearly that absolute inequality is not a good thing. But what we definitely know is growing inequality is bad for people. And why is it bad for people? Well, let's look at wee Sarah here, who's a baby. Over her life, Sarah will engage in a number of things. She will go to primary and secondary school. She might think about going to university. She'll look for a job, buy a house, maybe have a family and think about saving for retirement. Now, during this, life of Sarah's, if inequality grows, her opportunities diminish. And her op as her opportunities diminish, so do the opportunities of her children. So that's why we're interested in the growth. So what's happening in New Zealand? Well, let's look at the Gini measure. And we talked about the different measures that we, we use for income and other inequalities last week. And we're just going to focus on the Gini today. And this is over the long term, this is since the 1980s, what's been happening in income inequality in New Zealand? Well, it was a flat line, the 80s struck deregulation and the mother of all budgets, and we saw a great big leap in inequalities. Uh, then we saw a wee downturn in inequality of income with the introduction of working for families, then the global financial crisis hit, we saw an upturn, and we may or we may not be flatlining on inequality now. We actually need another year or two of data. But you're saying this line looks fairly flat, surely, surely it's clear. Well, in actual fact, this is what our income inequality looks like, more like an up and down kind of line. So that's why we need a little bit more data to know. What about wealth inequality? And I've mentioned that wealth is very important in terms of conferring opportunity. Well, what we do know about wealth inequality is that the last time we measured it in 2002, that it's about twice that of our income inequality. What does that mean? That means about 10% of the people have 50% of the wealth. And that was about the same as Australia in 2002. But we don't measure it on an ongoing basis, so we don't know what the trend in wealth inequality is. We do know that income inequality may be growing, but over the short term, we're not that clear. And in terms of deprivation, which I also talked about last week, our standard of living, we also don't know if there's inequalities there which are growing. We do have some concerns from our household income data which indicate that we should be worried about inequality. We look at the latest household income data and it shows that we've had a 3% increase in median household incomes, which looks like a good thing. Unfortunately, the growth has all been in the middle and upper income earners, so the poor have had a flat line. What's also had a flat line is our level, those people in severe deprivation. There's been no movement. Those people in severe deprivation have stayed there for the last 10 years. And for kids in severe deprivation, that's the same. And rather worryingly with our kids is that we do quite badly internationally in terms of deprivation. What about housing? Well, our housing costs have gone up on a steady trajectory. So what we know is that the proportion of our income that we spend on housing after tax is going up and up. And that for especially those in lower income brackets, it's getting quite high. 
So about 41% of those people in the lowest income brackets are spending over 30% of their after-tax income on housing. We also know that there's a large group of working poor that for children in poverty, 50% of those who are deprived or in income poverty are from working households. So these are things we should be concerned about when we're thinking about inequality and we're thinking about diminishing opportunity. So what's our take home message from today? That there has definitely been a generational shift in terms of income and inequality. That there may be a flat line or there may be a slight increase over the last two years. And we can argue about that, but really we're interested in what's happening over the life course of people. That our wealth inequality, when we measured it, was high, but we don't know what the pattern is. And that we've got some concerns which need teasing out, but we need to measure things better. And if we find out there is an imbalance in our opportunities, what can we do? Well, we need to know what tools are the most effective for addressing imbalance in resources and imbalance in opportunities. And that's what we spend our time doing here at the Morgan Foundation.